Today's video was inspired by a post on the forum by Ashley Ashes, who asked the rest of our community if you could use laptop memory in a desktop system. It turns out you can get adapters, unlike eBay. But is that really gonna work? Only one way to find out. One way to find out. One way to find out. Private internet access is the VPN service that encrypts all your internet traffic and uses a safe, protected IP. It's got tons of other useful features as well, so check it out now at the link below. All right, so let's start, I guess, by taking a closer look at these things. They're made by, I believe the company is actually called Jet, and this is their part number. You can actually get them in a wide variety of different configurations. These ones we found on eBay and are designed for DDR4 SODIMs to a DDR4 full-sized DIM. Now, you might think to yourself, well, what's to not work about this? I can put a micro SD card into a, a full-size SD adapter. No one's bewildered and baffled by this, but the reason this is such a big deal is come in and have a closer look. SODIMs are a 200 contact point standard. Full-size DIMs actually have 288. So on here, we've got a couple of different things. We've got whatever the hell a virtual fuse is, apparently it's patented. We've got a jumper. I mean, there's no manual, obviously, so I'm gonna assume the defaults are fine. All right, so let's shut down, and while I wait for Windows Update, apparently, uh, let's talk about the challenge and show you guys how to install it. I already put together one of them, but you wanna kinda of go in at an angle like that, push it down, make sure everything's in there fully. Then you put a little bit of tension on it, just like that. Now, I am actually asking more from the adapter. I wanna see a couple of things. I wanna see if we can get these sticks to run in quad channel with the existing 3200 megahertz DDR4 that's on this platform and I wanna see if I can get the whole thing to still run at 3200 megahertz because it's one thing if you can get memory you know, working and recognized, it's another if this adapter is not interfering with its performance. That looks ridiculous. You know, we've had conversations internally about how hard it is to build an ugly computer these days now that every motherboard has a black PCB and, and all that kind of stuff, but by Jove, I think we've done it. Okay, let's see what happens. Did we fail already? <laughs> Postcode 55. Uh, well then, code 55 means no RAM installed, which is fairly discouraging because there definitely is RAM installed even aside from these uh, SODIM to DIM adapters. So I'm gonna try reseeding them. The old wiggle wiggle and then firing it up again. Balls. Did you touch this before you started filming the video? No. Okay, I'm gonna try the memo K button. I've never used it successfully. <laughs> Shut up, Brendan. Okay, let's try clear CMOS then. Come on, baby. What we're gonna try next is pulling out the mismatched memory. I mean, admittedly, that was a bit of a long shot in the first place. Okay, here we go. That's very interesting. 16 gigs of memory. Let's get it booted up. So for Fire Up Task Manager, we've got all 16 gigs of our memory. It knows that they're sodium. So I don't know if it's reading that off the SPD chip or if, I mean, it must be, it must be, because how would Windows have any way of knowing? Okay, so we're just finishing up the IDA64 cache and memory benchmark, and there's a couple more interesting things here. We are in fact running in dual channel mode, so that's good, but only at stock speeds, not the higher XMP speeds of our modules. And also interesting is that our read and write numbers look about like you'd expect from DDR4 2133 in dual channel mode. This is weird. So our memory is showing up as DDR4 2400 megahertz, but I don't know where it's reading that from because these adapters shouldn't have any logic on them whatsoever. But, but there you have it, it's set. But when we were in the operating system just now, I didn't change anything. 
we were at 2133. So here's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna try and run at 3800. That's not realistic, but let's try sort of high speed, like 3000 megahertz and see if we can get there. Hmm, it's boot looping right now. You can tell because we keep going through the same sequence of postcodes here. Okay, let's try something a little less aggressive. 2666 megahertz wouldn't be like a performance memory kit or anything when this was current, but like it would be decent, middle of the road. Hey, there we go. All right, so this is moment of truth time. What we wanna see is if going from 2133 to 2666 gives us an improvement. Yes, it does. Okay, not bad. So you won't be running at the bleeding edge, but you should expect it to work. Bringing us to what is often the most challenging part of these kinds of videos where, you know, it's like, yeah, you could adapt your trailer hitch to a office chair. You can, but should you? So this thing then. No one should go out of their way to use one of these. If you've got a desktop, you should buy desktop memory and install desktop memory in it. And if you've got a laptop, then, well, you, there's no adapter the other way around because a full-size DIMM physically wouldn't, wouldn't fit in there. But I can see situations where they could come in handy. Like, let's say, for example, that you've got an older laptop that you're looking to upgrade. Well, a lot of them might come with you know, two eight gig sticks in them. And then you might go, okay, well, I don't want 16 gigs, I want 32. In order to upgrade it, you've got to go buy two new 16 gig sticks, and then you've got to take out your old ones. So if you were looking to give those parts a new lease on life, to Jet's credit, I actually don't even know who makes these things, to their credit, these are inexpensive, and from our testing, while not high performance, functional. So, not recommended to need them, but recommended if you need them to go ahead and pick them up. Speaking of going ahead and picking something up, why not picking up a subscription to FreshBooks? FreshBooks is the online cloud-based accounting solution that makes it easier to run your small business or freelance operation. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments to get paid up to four days faster. You can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games once and for all. And you can track your expenses, you can log your hours, and you can do those things while you're on the go, which is really cool. Their Android and iOS apps are fully featured with all the functionality of the desktop platform. So don't take my word for it. Try FreshBooks for free for 30 days by going to freshbooks.com slash tech tips and entering tech tips in the how did you hear about us section. We're gonna have that linked below. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, then uh, you can hit that dislike button. But if you liked it, then hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. While you're down there, you can check out our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum which is also down there and where we got the inspiration from this video. We do actually read your messages over there. Not, well, not all of them, but like some. <laughs>